he's way bigger than me. And then this is his, ooh, that's kind of nasty looking. Welcome to Dinosaur National Monument. Once you are through the park service gates, you arrive at the main visitor center. This building has some exhibits along with the gift shop and the book stamping station. The really interesting place though, is the quarry visitor center a short ways away. The guide suggested we take the shuttle up as the parking lot does tend to get full, but we decided to just drive up ourselves and figured we'd come back if it looked too crowded. In the 1950s, the Quarry Visitor Center was built to showcase this huge 150-foot wall of exposed dinosaur bones. There are over 1,500 bones in this place alone. And this is just a fraction of what they found between 1909 and 1922. But by July of 2006, the building was showing concerning signs of instability and was closed. In 2009, the National Monument received a grant of over $13 million to renovate and stabilize the Visitor Center. It was reopened in 2011 and is what you see today. So how and when were all these bones found? In 1909, paleontologist Earl Douglas traveled to the Uinta Basin in northeastern Utah as part of his work for the Carnegie Museum. Initially, he was sent to find fossils of early mammals, but the plan was changed and they redirected him to look for dinosaur bones. On August 17, 1909, he finally found what he was looking for, and a whole lot more. Near the town of Jensen, Utah, in the hills above the Green River, Douglas saw eight huge tailbones sticking up out of the surrounding sandstone. He thought he'd found a brontosaurus, but it turned out to be an entirely new dinosaur one they later named Apatosaurus Louise, after the wife of Andrew Carnegie, Louise Whitfield Carnegie. Work continued in the dinosaur quarry in Jensen until 1922, with an estimated 700,000 pounds of dinosaur bones removed from these hills. In 1915, Woodrow Wilson, then President of the United States, declared the 86 acres of dinosaur quarry, a national monument to protect the treasure trove of bones discovered by Douglas. In 1938, the U.S. government expanded the initial 86 acres to a massive 210,844 acres or 329 square miles. The monument spans two states, Utah and Colorado, with the main quarry visitor center housed in Jensen, Utah. This is the visitor center where you will find the wall of dinosaur bones. Now, while the area around Dinosaur National Monument is most definitely a dino graveyard, it's not the only place in the Beehive State where they can be found. A couple of years ago, I had occasion to meet a real live paleontologist, Dr. Alan Titus. He works in Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument, and he also discovered a previously unknown species of Triceratops. They call it Nazutoceratops titusi, after Dr. Titus and the critter's exceptionally large snout. I'll leave links in the description for Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument, as well as Dr. Titus and his dinosaur in the description below. We're at the lower level now, and so we can see up pretty close, some of the excavation that they've done. This part of the quarry was actively, oh wow, whoa, hi. From a Camarasaurus. Is it the right adult thigh bone? Yes, that's what it is. And this is what a Camarasaurus looks like. It looks a little like a Brontosaurus. Camarasaurus is the most complete long neck dinosaur ever found. <gasps> cool. Whoa, hi there. Oh, he kind of got all scrunched up. He's way bigger than me. And then this is his, ooh, that's kind of nasty looking. Oh, he's a claw. That's kind of sharp, yikes. And what to do with that dinosaur bone in your backyard? You could turn it into a bench. That'd be awesome. 
This is an Allosaurus, a common predator of the Morrison. Nice, I like it. Bones. Touch the bone. This particular pizza of the water, you see, it says yeah. touch real dinosaur bones. Okay. So you're, you're touching. Allowed to touch. You're allowed to touch these. Yes. And there's, there's small ones that you can also touch. Oh, yeah. It's like touch the butt. You touch the butt. A Nemo, right? Touch the bone. Looks like it's a head of a what? Of an Allosaurus. Very sharp teeth you have. Same guy as that, except he doesn't have the rest of his body, I guess. Sad. Yeah, I'm super happy that Jurassic Park is not a, a real thing. Today, Dinosaur National Monument paleontologists work more on preservation of fossils and bones than excavation. You can learn more about their current work by clicking on the links below. Dinosaur National Monument is open 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. The Quarry Visitor Center is open from 9 to 5, 7 days a week from mid-May to mid-September, and daily from 10 to 4 in the winter. Check the website for exact opening and closing dates. We'll leave the links in the description below if you would like to visit Dinosaur National Monument. There are many opportunities for camping, hiking, and river rafting. Inside the monument, you can take the 10-mile tour of Tilted Rocks Drive or the Island Park Road, an 18-mile unpaved road that passes by some petroglyphs and gorgeous views of the Green River. Dinosaur National Monument and the Quarry Visitor Center are very fun stops, especially if you have dino-loving kids. There's lots of bones, skeletons, and interactive exhibits to teach and amaze. We hope you've enjoyed this little visit to Dinosaur National Monument. We had a really good time there. That's gonna do it for this time, so thanks so much for stopping by. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and ring the bell to get notified. You bet. And until next time, restless friends, you take care. Bye.